It is official. SpaceX has successfully completed the first private space flight in history. So let's discuss why this is important, what it means for human spaceflight, and why you should care about it. To recap, this is a private space flight called Polaris Dawn and is paid for by Jared Isaacman, who is the mission commander. He is also joined by Scott Poteet, Sarah Gillis, and Anna Menon. The mission launched on a Falcon 9 rocket on September 10th from Cape Canaveral, Florida, and within the first day they reached an altitude of 1,400 kilometers before lowering to an altitude of 737 kilometers, which is their cruising altitude while they prepare for the spacewalk. They've conducted several medical and science tests while on orbit, such as monitoring eye pressure, nitrogen levels in the body, radiation exposure, and even a strange-looking but valuable tool to insert a camera called an endoscope through the nasal cavity to detect collapsed airways in zero gravity, without surgery. That could be extremely valuable for future missions, especially missions to Mars. They also sent mission reports back to Earth with uh, some cool broadcasts, and Anna Menon gave a really tender-hearted reading of her children's book that was directed at child cancer patients at St. Jude's Cancer Research Center, and also for her own children back on Earth. Gather round, my sweet dragons. Your mama is back. Snuggling close, cuddle up on my lap. I'm home from my mission. It was hard to be apart. But while I was gone, I held you close in my heart. I think that that's really sweet and really admirable, too, that they were raising money for St. Jude's Cancer Research Center with this mission. But now for the main event. SpaceX copies. Dragon, you are go to open hatch. For how complicated and risky this spacewalk was, delays were to be expected. But everyone at SpaceX deserves a huge amount of credit for making this happen just a few hours later than they had originally planned. Because there is no airlock, the entire capsule had to be depressurized and all four crew members were exposed to space. Their new EVA spacesuits were filled with oxygen and they opened the hatch when everything was ready. Unfortunately, we had a loss of signal of the cameras during that hatch opening, but apparently everything went fine. Now, keep in mind that these are brand new spacesuits, being tested in the vacuum of space for the very first time. These suits have been designed to be much more flexible and maneuverable than the suits that NASA uses. NASA has been struggling with their old suits for years and haven't been able to completely fix the ones at the International Space Station. The old NASA suits at the station have even put astronauts in danger when they have broken down or have problems. So testing a newer, lighter, more flexible suit could enable more spacewalks and enable a lot more work to be done in space in the very near future. After the hatch was opened, Jared Isaacman went out first and did some mobility checks. Listen in real quick to what he said after going outside. The SpaceX, back at home we all have a lot of work to do, but from here, Earth sure looks like a perfect world. <laughs> Very nice quote. That's pretty cool. Now, to many of you, watching this may seem um, anticlimactic. I thought they were going to do a spacewalk, I hear some of you say, or how come they aren't floating around outside the capsule? Well, again, this was a test of a brand new suit and an incredibly risky test. Everyone on that mission could have lost their lives during this spacewalk. And let me ask you this. Would you want to be floating out a few feet away without anything to hang on to when your suit springs a leak? If it were me, I would rather be able to quickly go back inside and close the hatch if an emergency happened, at least for the first test of a brand new spacesuit. But in any case, moving right along, next up, Sarah Gillis had her turn going out and performed similar mobility tests. Her and Jared kept rating different movements around a two, mostly threes, and a few fours, but 
I didn't catch what that was out of, or rather what scale they're using. Is that a three out of 10, a three out of five? How high does this rating system go? Is three good or is three terrible? How does it compare to the NASA suits? So if you know the answer to that, if I just missed that somehow, please leave us a comment because I'd really like to know. In any case, this spacewalk seems to have been a success. They performed all of their tests with the new suits and I'm sure gathered lots of valuable data on how to make their suits even better. The crew got the hatch closed and the Dragon capsule was repressurized. It seems that everything is going well and as of now we await their return to Earth. Before that happens though, they will perform some tests with an off-the-shelf Starlink system for data and spacecraft tracking. They're calling it Plug and Plazer. <laughs> Those tests are going to happen tomorrow on day four of their flight. As of right now, I am unsure when their return to Earth is actually going to be. Maybe Saturday and maybe Sunday. I think that even SpaceX isn't sure just yet, at least at the time of me filming this. But just in case, SpaceX ha does have two recovery ships, one in the Pacific Ocean and one in the Atlantic Ocean, to recover the capsule and crew after splashdown. We will continue to follow this mission and look forward to discussing it in detail this Sunday during our live show at 1700 Coordinated Universal Time. We hope that you'll join us and share your thoughts about this incredible mission. And if you aren't sure what time the live show is going to be for you, don't worry. Just subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you won't miss it. In the meantime, keep on moving onwards and upwards. And don't forget, add Astra to the stars.